you guys. So today we're going to be working on building a weather station that will fly on our drone. Um, doing this um, will kind of is kind of cool because I'm interested in meteorology. I always have been. Actually, it was that was going to be my major before I changed to electrical engineering. Um, but in uh, meteorology, a lot of times they'll send up weather balloons to collect data uh, from the atmosphere higher up in the air to get an idea of the weather conditions. So I always thought it'd be cool if I could do the same with my drone. I mean, we've got these drones here. Will go up to 500 meters um, and can take um, data from that from that level of the air, and especially in forecasting tornadoes, uh, the low level atmosphere is very critical to um, detecting wind shear or reading the temperature profile. There um, can help in predicting tornadoes. And the more wind shear you have, so that that is the either the more turning of the winds or the increase in wind speed as you go higher. Um, also, the temperature profile to tell how unstable the air is um, can be very valuable in predicting tornadoes. The cool thing about drones is right before a storm hits or right before the front moves through, we, you can send them up quickly and take data. So I wanted to create um, a setup for my drone that I could do this in front and before storms hit. And I've already played around with this some, um, but today I'm going to kind of show you what I've done um, and what I've kind of set up here with my drone. Here, these are our three components that we're going to need. We've got the Arduino Uno, we've got an Arduino uh, Data Logging Shield, and we've got a um, very small, um, this is the I can get it focused here. An altimeter and the MPL 311582. This here is an altimeter, but it's also a um, temperature probe. So, all right. So we're going to take the um, this is the data shield logger here, and we're going to place this on top of of our logger here. I'm going to slide this down. These pins will go in here like so. So it fits nice and smoothly. Alright, so as you can see here, we've got the SCL and the SDA pins. These pins are going to connect directly to the, the SCL and the SDA pins on, on here. So we got our black, our black and red wire that are connected as well to that. So we're going to take these two pins and we're going to connect this pin to here. And this pin, oh, that's backwards actually. So this is the uh, this is the SCL, and this is the SDA pin. Those go in like so. All right. So now to power the Arduino, um, as you probably know, we've got our ground, and we're going to use our um, we're going to pull the three volts off because this board um, actually runs off of three volts. So so now when we power the Arduino, it'll power our board, and then um, the data will come through the SDL and the SDA. Um, logging shield. So, I'm going to go and head over to our code. Alright, so this is a uh, file um, that, I, that I found online. Um, this is for, once again, for the for the Adafruit um, MPL311582. And if you search on Google, you can actually find this library file. And since we're using um, the I2Seq um, communication, we want to connect the SCL and the SCL pin and CSDA to the SDA pin. So we're going to come down here, and basically in our setup um, code, we just check to um, initialize the SD card, and if the SD card is not inserted, then we'll say card failed, and continue. Then we'll come down here, we're going to start the, uh, the barometer sensor and the altitude, and so let's begin here, and if you can't, if it doesn't begin, then we say kind of find sensor. So Coming in down here, we uh, we pull our values for the pressure, altitude, and temperature, and set them to these um, variables. And then we're going to print them, and then we're going to put them into a string, which that string will then be written to our SD card. So we open the SD card, create a file called that dialog.txt. We're going to write to that file, and we are going to print our data string into that, and then we're going to close, and then we loop this continuously. I went ahead and uploaded the code to the Arduino by using uh, this this uh, cord here, which obviously if you're familiar with Arduino, you know how that works. We just hit upload after it's connected through this cord to the Arduino, that, that plugs in here. Um, it uploaded the code, and now the Arduino is ready to run. So now we have to figure out, we actually have to get this thing to run while we're flying. Um, so that's where this 9-volt battery is going to come in. Uh, this will actually supply um, power to the board, and you can... Um, supply anywhere between 7 to 12 volts is a safe voltage to supply to the Arduino and the board will actually figure out exactly um, what voltages it will use to make it run well. Um, so that will just be uh, um, connected here at 
at VN, if you can see that there, at VN right, right here, and then we'll connect the common ground to ground, and then it will output the correct voltage to our actual sensor here. All right, so we've gone ahead and taped the uh, the board here to to the actual drone, and we're going to go ahead and add the battery pack now. So we got everything taped to the drone now. Um, this is the um, the data shield with the Arduino underneath. We got our 9 volt battery pack which is plugged in here. You see the light is on on the Arduino. Here we've got underneath this is our temp sensor and the um, and the altimeter. And we've got the data logged up. We're ready to go fly. All right. So there's our setup there. Now to go and power this thing up, we're going to go ahead and take our power and go ahead and plug it in. And I've got my LED is on. I don't know if you can see that. And now we're going to. So I've set the code up where once, as you all saw, the code will not start if the SD card is not inserted. And so we're going to insert the card. And now we're going to restart it by pressing this button. And the code is running. All right. I'm going to turn around here. Sure, all my controls are working well. Go ahead and start it off. Alright, so the wind's really blowing. I think we're going to um, call it a day. So we just got done flying, and we're going to go ahead and come over here and take the SD card out. We've um, unpowered, we've taken the uh, power out of the input, and we're going to just pull the SD card out. We're going to come over here to the computer. Just going to plop this in. And. Alright, so you can see here, this is our file that we created, and we can go and open it up real quick. And this is our data here. You can see, so first we've got the temperature, then we've got our altitude, and then we've got, or this is the pressure, and this is the altitude in feet here. So 1,100 feet is about our altitude. Um, that's that's pretty, pretty accurate there. And we can run through all this data here, and we can see, I missed it. Okay, right up here, we get about 1,300 feet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this file as a CSV file. Um, just go file, save as, and then um, you can click down here and just change this to .csv. So here in my mount directory, we've got the file. Once again, we're going to open it up. And there's our data, and we click import. That imports it into a variable down here, which is now in our file. So we come down here, and I've edited this, edited this, and we've called the file name two is equal to data log, and done a little bit of changing, and. Here is where I set my actual altitude for flight. That way, we can, our altitude is going to be um, height above ground level. So we're saying that AGL is 1,100 feet at my location. And so with that imported, and once again, um, the other data from our wind data imported, we can go ahead and click Run. And so here's all our figures, which we've gone through before. And here is our skew T temperature. So for this flight today, I only went up to 80 meters, or about 300 feet. Um, and here's our temperature data. So we started out to actually, ground level was close to 48, 49 degrees. And then about 30 meters up, we saw um, the temperature started to cool off quite a bit. I say quite a bit, it's only about two degrees. 
um, before it steadied and then we rose to 80, 80, um, 80 meters there. So there we go, that's the data. Um, I thought it worked out pretty well. And once again on a less windy day we can go a lot higher and get better data. But anyway, I will link this um, a file to, the, to download this uh, MATLAB code and you can run it yourself, do your own tests. And we will do some improvements and see how that goes in the future. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and pull up. Um, this is Air Data, um, a, a website here that takes ingest drone data and compiles it for us. And so the flight log while we're flying um, is continually loading these all this data from the flight into these flight logs. So using the DJI Go app or, um, or also some other apps that you might use for flying your drone, you can actually choose to upload this data to airdata.com. Um, so if you have an account with AirData, um, the free account includes some features, but it does not include one of the features we're going to need for this project here. So a recent flight I've done, um, what we've done is these files are uploaded, so we click on our flight here, pulls it up, we see a lot of different options here, and what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to weather, click on that, and so we have a couple options, so you can see um, what the weather was according to some weather stations nearby, and then you can look by at here at in-flight wind, and what we're actually interested in is the altitude profile. So this is a neat feature. Um, that this company or this website offers that actually calculates the wind speed during your flight um, at different levels in the air. Um, it does this by knowing what your drone should be doing, the controls at that certain point in the air, by knowing how much the drone has to correct um, to stay in a certain in a certain location or stay flying in a certain, certain direction. And so we can calculate the actual wind speed during your flight here. As you can see here in this map here, it calculates the flight um, wind speed during a lot of different locations. So we can actually go down here and it's got a nice little table here of all our data. And so for what we're going to do, we're going to take this and we're going to copy it. Control C. We're going to run over and we're going to do an Excel file. And we're going to paste this right in there. It actually pastes it out into individual columns. So we're going to, if I can recall correctly, we're going to go ahead and delete the header. And let's delete that column. And we're going to save this as a C and we're going to delete this column here. And we're going to save this save as a CVS file. Go browse, and we're gonna actually head over to my, uh, my file. We're gonna go down here to cvs.cvs file. And so you see I already have a lot of these, and I'm just gonna put in book six, and we hit save. And so what that's done is here you can see this is um, a bunch of different data points during the flight, and we've got the wind speed, the direction of the wind, the altitude that the drone is at, and I think this here is distance from home location, and this is the time of flight. And so what I've done here with my program, which we're going to run over to, is this is a MATLAB program, and this will input this data, and I've um, coded this to actually do a lot of different cool things with the data. Um, to predict tornadoes, well, there's a couple things that we really care about. Um, some of these are helicity, bulk shear, and vorticity. Basically this is the shear at the lower parts of the atmosphere. And we can actually, because the drone is flying up to 500 meters, the maximum obviously, we can actually calculate some of the wind shear that's occurring in that level, um, which is really critical, can be critical to tornado formation. It's not quite as high as we'd like to go. Typically it's zero to one kilometer or a thousand meters is the critical area. Um, drones don't have that um, ability to go that high. It's also not very um, safe. But this is this is kind of a neat kind of thing that you can do um, to get at least a very low level um, shear. So. Here in my file, uh, you can you can indicate the name of your file that you're going to be inputting. This is book two. We're going to do book two because that's a uh, recent file I've done. It's actually the flight. And we're going after we've been put to that. Uh, it's pretty much basically one of the main things actually is we have to click on this and we actually have to import it. If you don't import, it won't know what to do with this um, with this Excel file. And so it knows that it's going to take this and import, and import, and it does all the work. It throws everything into what it needs to do, and then we're going to hit run. So after we hit run, um, you see a number of figures that are going to pop up here. And these are a couple things. Right here is a, what we call a skew-t in meteorology. This is a plot of wind speed versus height in meters here. And so to the left is lower wind speeds, to the right is higher wind speeds. And so this gives you an idea of shear as you go up into the atmosphere. And so the higher we go, we see that this um, plot skews towards a higher wind speed. And the, the further this line skews, um, the more wind shear we have and the more potential there are for tornadoes. So this here is kind of a, just basically a wind rose. Um, gives you an idea of the direction and the uh, strongest winds that occur the most during the drone flight. This isn't very useful for tornado prediction, but this is a neat feature that I've added on. 
So here is a photograph. Um, this is something used a lot in meteorology. And this typically goes from, the, typically what we look at is zero to three kilometers um, for a normal photograph. Uh, a good photograph is one that curves um, to the counter or to the clockwise direction as you extend. So you get this this looping counterclockwise curve. In fact, I wish I could pull one out. I'll probably pull one in the video here. Um, that indicates a high amount of felicity, and that's curvature um, in the low levels um, that will aid towards tornado um, formation. So in this uh, in this flight here, we see a lot of scattered points, and then this kind of jump. But this is low level. This is this line is going to follow flight as we go up into the atmosphere. So it starts out at zero at maybe like five, 10 feet, then we go up. So we definitely see a shift in low level winds to the, um, to, the to the left as we go higher. So that's actually an indication of negative velocity. And if we go back to our file, this is our data output that actually does show up here in our velocity calculation, um, negative 124. Um, so I've calculated these values here, bulk shear velocity, and all these values are automatically adjust to how high you fly. So this would be bulk shear in knots from zero to 305 meters, as that's the maximum altitude I reached in that certain flight. And this here is an output of raw data um, throughout the flight. Once again, we've got the direction of the wind, this wind speed and height, this is all meters, meters per second. So that's basically it. I'm going to um, actually link a Google Drive to the, this um, program that you all can, can look at and download and kind of play around with. Feel free to, um, to contact me or, or leave comments asking questions about how, how I've done this or how to run some of this code if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty cool program. You can play around with it a bit and see what all you can do. Uh, but definitely these couple features here are pretty cool uh, to be able to use your drone in a meteorological application.